what is online crime? Can it also lead to online violence? Is it terrorism as we know these days? Let's find out. Bruce Hoffman, an American political analyst, says terrorism is a deliberate creation and exploitation of fear through violence or the threat of violence in the pursuit of a political change. However, cyber threats are not just for the governments. They are for you and for me too. Friends, this Saturday, let's explore a few challenges that we will be required to increasingly negotiate in future. Relations between countries are recognized today by the conditions they impose for peace and for war. However, peace does not necessarily mean a lack of conflict and war does not necessarily mean a conventional nuclear war between nations. Countries do not wage full-blown wars anymore. They do not use conventional weapons either. Many of them would probably resort to economic wars. So the opponent's political and military power is threatened. Trade embargoes, boycotts, sanctions, tariff discriminations, freezing of capital assets, suspension of aid, prohibition of investments and expropriation are all the new tools in the new world of war. Even as the world is coming to terms with an ever-changing crime scenario, online crime, online violence and online terrorism seem to be setting new standards in the world of crime. WhatsApp, social media and the ever-evolving internet are the vehicles with the lines blurry between cyber crime and cyber terrorism, are we not witnessing an increasing instance of them? Be it election meddling, dissemination of you know, propaganda through social media, activism, activism, or targeting of critical infrastructure, amongst many others. Cyber terrorism is actually a convergence of cyberspace and terrorism and it must include use of social media. That is what is done by the terrorist groups to spread their ideology. Without the cyber, such activity is just propaganda. The difference must be appreciated and so that solutions to tackle it can be found. Most trending cyber attacks currently are ransomware, extortion, cloud third party threats, mobile malware, vipers, and destructive malware, weaponization of legitimate tools, zero day vulnerabilities in supply chains, and global attacks on the businesses that we have. A little more understanding of all these will do a world of good to us. Ransomware is a malware focused on extortion, extorting payments via data encryption. By denying legitimate users across you know, the world, by encrypting the data, the attackers demand a ransom for its recovery. Because you do not have the decryption algorithms for that. Double extortion attacks add a data theft to data encryption. Some ransomware operators have shifted their focus solely on the extortion effort, skipping the encryption completely. These ransomware data breaches are much faster to carry on very hard to detect and cannot be fixed by using backups. Further, companies are increasingly adopting cloud computing. It's a move with significant security implications. 
unfamiliarity with cloud security, best practices, the cloud shared security model, and other factors can make cloud environments more vulnerable to attack than on-premise infrastructure. While cyber criminals are increasingly targeting cloud infrastructure with exploits for new vulnerabilities, an emerging and worrying aspect is the targeting of cloud service providers. Now, by targeting cloud service providers and cloud solutions, with their attacks, cyber criminals they gain, you know, they gain access to their customers' sensitive data and the customers' IT infrastructure. And now, by exploiting the trust relationships between organizations and their service providers, attackers increase the scale and the impact of their attacks. Friends. As mobile devices have become more widely used, mobile malware has emerged as a growing threat. Now, mobile malware masquerading as legitimate and harmless applications such as QR code readers, flashlights and games have grown more common on official and unofficial WhatsApp stores or application stores. Cyber criminals are offering unofficial versions of applications as malicious AKPs or APKs. Now what is an APK? Android package kit file format via direct downloads and third party app stores. These apps are designed to take advantage of name recognition to slip malware onto employee devices. Now, while ransomware and data breaches are some of the most visible threats to corporate data security today, vipers and other destructive malware can have even greater business impacts. Instead of breaching information or demanding a ransom, for its, you know, return, wipers delete data entirely. Friends, the line between legitimate penetration, testing and system administration tools and malware is a very fine one. Often functionality that cyber threat actors would build into their malware is also built into their target's operating systems. Zero-day vulnerabilities pose a significant but transient risk to corporate cybersecurity. A vulnerability is zero day when it has been discovered, but no fix is available for the issue. During the window between the initial exploitation of a vulnerability and the vendor's release of a patch for it, cyber criminals exploit the vulnerability unchecked. Friends, cyber security is a problem that is rapidly growing on a global scale. Last year, global cyber attacks increased by 28% compared to the same period this year. A mature corporate cyber security program must include comprehensive threat protection, round-the-clock monitoring, and access to up-to-date threat intelligence. When cyber threats turn to violence, the matter becomes serious. Technology firms may have new measures for stamping out violent extremist content on the internet. But with crime, live streamed on Facebook, via head-mounted cameras and silent back-end technology supporting series of bombs that rip through churches, hotels and whatnot. Probably both the technology firms and the government must do much more. 
Of course, the technology firms like Google, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, they have, they have all come together uh, to set up a Christchurch call in, way, in the wake of the shootout in New Zealand. You know, but action on the ground is more important. Why cannot the social media giants block the video streaming, Facebook Live, as soon as the breach occurs? They use machine language, machine learning algorithms and data analytics that profile and predict events anyway. Digital fingerprinting to track and remove harmful pictures, illicit content and videos also can be done. Surely people's lives are more important. Freedom of speech is all important, but it cannot be misused or threaten others' right to live. Friends, every one of us use social media for propaganda or for entertainment. Politicians, political parties, they use it for political gains. We often complain that Media companies are, you know, not doing enough and that they must prevent platforms from broadcasting cyber violence, but hardly follow rules or ethics in the use of social media. How does one stop hate speeches, whether it's by individuals or by political parties? If there are supporters for them, there are also, you know, those who oppose it. One speech could eventually you know, cross the line and cause mayhem. Stringent IT Act amendments to levy penalties on companies failing to take action must be there. However, it is important to understand that whereas the entire cyberspace must be watched by a cyber warrior, a cyber terrorist has only one target to watch for. That's the tragedy. With that, let me sign off for this Saturday with a promise to be back the next Saturday. And until then, Namaskar, thank you, Danyavad.